Hi, I'm Rob Spies here at the J.D. Lore School of Woodworking, and today I want to take you through the process of this flame finish we just did an article for in Woodcraft Magazine. It's a really cool approach to finishing open grain hardwoods. Um, the Japanese use this technique called shosugiban, and what it is, it's charring the exterior surface, and that does a number of things. First, it gives a really pronounced color and texture to the material. Secondly, it adds a little bit of a protection to water, um, resistant to rot and bugs, things like that. So it's used a lot in exteriors, outside siding, things like that to you know, protect buildings from the elements. In this case, we're going to use it in interior work, and really what I'm looking for here more is the color and the texture. Open grain woods it works really great on because the flame is going to eat away at that soft growth, the early growth, and then the late growth that's a little bit harder is going to stay there and you're going to see a texture to it. A few materials that work for this, um, this table is made of red oak. So I've got a few samples down here. Uh, plain sawn red oak looks great, really pronounces that texture, shows the color really nicely, um, that really sort of dark silky black. It also could look really nice on quarter sawn oak. This is a piece of quarter sawn red oak where that straight grain really sort of jumps out once the texture is popped. Beyond that, other open grain woods it could work on. Uh, white oak is going to give a little bit different character to the material. The white oak has got a much tighter growth structure than a red oak, so there's going to be more spacing in the red oak than you will have the white oak. So this might be a finer look, a little less texture, uh, but you're still going to get that color um, popping out pretty nicely. Ash is another great wood for it. Um, ash has sort of the refinement of the white oak, but also it has that wide spacing that we're looking for. So ash is a really great material for this technique and it'll look very graphic, um, very nice in ash. What I'm going to do to actually char this surface, I'm just going to use a simple propane torch from the hardware store. Nothing fancy, no large blowtorch. In this case, that's way overkill for a piece like this. We're not going to use a blowtorch on it just a small focus flame. You could use just a regular you know, adapter for the propane torch here, but I find what's nice is to have uh, this guy, it's just a hose with an adapter. So I can, you know, I can turn the flame on and off with this trigger. I can adjust the strength of the flame with the dial over here. And it just makes it for a much, you know, much nicer apparatus to actually char the material. I don't have to hold the tank in my hand. I've got a little bit more maneuverability here. After the whole surface is charred, then I'm going to just use a stiff bristle brush to then brush the surface. And what that's going to do is going to take away any remaining soot that's left over, and that's what's really going to develop the texture of the piece. It's going to sort of brush away all that early growth, and leave the late growth proud, and that's what's going to give us the texture. Last but not least, we want to talk a little bit about safety, because obviously I've got fire in my wood shop, so you want to be careful. First of all, I've cleared a space, so I've got you know, a good you know, five feet surrounding the workbench. And I've got a bucket of water and a fire extinguisher at the ready. You really don't want to get to the point where you've got to break out a fire extinguisher for this. Because you know, what's happening, you'll see the process, it's a very focused flame. As soon as the piece catches fire, I'm kind of moving on. So we're never really getting to the point where this piece is actually on fire. I'm just charring the surface and moving on. Um, certainly, it would be a good idea if you're just trying this out for the first time, do it outside, get a comfort level with it, and if you don't have a large shop with a lot of open space, then definitely outside is the place to go with this. So, I'm going to clear off my bench, set this table up, and move on to finishing it up, and we'll show you the process. I start with the table flipped upside down, get the bottoms of the legs. What's really pretty cool is you can really see the moisture content in the wood. So this is material that's been kiln dried. It's been very humid over here for the last while. You can see that water leaving the wood, just boiling it out. An interesting bit of wood science there. After I burn the whole bottom, I'm going to flip it over, then work on the top as well. A 
Now I'm going to work up the legs and into the aprons. When I get into this joint right here, I'm not going to be able to get that char to go into the corner. So I just move on and I'll come back and touch that up later. As I move the flame across, I'm just working small little two inch sections at a time. Once those flames start to catch, I move on to the section below. You'll notice that the straight grained, more quarter sawn sections of the material burn a lot easier than these wider flat, flat sawn sections. When I finished burning the whole piece, I've got a nice even char. You might find as you go through, you might have to come back and touch up a few spots that don't have that full sort of depth of color. Once you're there, then you're going to take a stiff bristle brush and just brush with the grain. What this is going to do is sort of disperse that color out a little bit more evenly and it's going to start to work away that soft growth that's burned away. That's where the texture is really going to pop out. You just brush it vigorously. Um, some people would use a wire brush for that, but I think it's a little too, a little too much, a little too aggressive. Um, just some stiff plastic bristles, like a shoe shine brush, would work just fine. So I'm gonna just go around and brush out the whole surface with the grain. Now I'm gonna go in and get those spots that I missed with the torch. You could either use a black dye. Um, just mixed up water-based dye that works well. If you don't have black dye on hand, a uh, Sharpie or sort of black marker, I mean that's I guess a black dye as well, just in marker form. So I'm going to go around touch up all these spots. I'm going to get the inside of the hole down slots. I'm going to get where these joints come together and then it's all going to be ready to go. So after all the touch up is done, last thing I'm going to do is go over the whole piece in boiled linseed oil. Uh, after the boiled linseed oil goes on, I'm going to let it dry for five days and then put a satin, uh, I like a wipe on poly on top of it, just sort of softens things up. I like the linseed oil because, you know, it just, it really dives in to bring out that color and helps pop the texture. Um, I also like the notion of just flooding this with an oil that really soaks into the wood after it's been kind of sapped of all that moisture content through the burning process. So I'm just going to liberally apply the linseed oil let that dry and then we're all done.